it's Crazy Van Gosh, and I'm here because they're having an amazing day today. We are in a little bit of a different environment. I'm sort of, as you would say, on holiday. <laughs> and so it's a little bit of a different environment. I am late to this reaction, so I apologize. But we are going to be reacting to the Book of Boba Fett, episode two, well, chapter two. Um, does it have a title? No, it doesn't have a title in the thing. So I don't know what it's called, but you know, we'll find that out as soon as we get into the episode. Um, I'm super excited for this. I know a lot of people are sort of like not really excited about it, especially with the first episode. In all honesty, I found it really good because I found like it was very familiar. It was like the Mandalorian, very slow paced. Um, and also just like giving the context slowly. They're not rushing into it. But um, I've heard things about this episode, not spoilery, thank the Lord. Um, and it's also 50 minutes. So, which means it's probably like 45, 50 minutes, well, not 50, probably like a fa around the 45 minute mark, probably. Um, giving it like a couple of minutes to do the credits, but I am super excited for this. Um, and yeah, again, like I said, I've heard things about it. Um, people have been talking about it a lot and saying good things. So I am excited to see what it's going to, what, like what's going to go down and what's going to happen for our characters. Um, I'm particularly excited to see where they take Boba because obviously they've given us the context of what happened to him, um, post being in the Sarlacc pit and now how he's been taken by the... I can't remember what they're... Yeah, they're called the Tuscans. So I'm really excited to see stuff about that. Because obviously, like, we did see a little bit of what happened with Boba in their hands. And uh, I'm excited to see, like, if that develops, if he learns anything from them. So let's get into it. Before that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoy this video. But also keep up to date with all my other reactions to more TV shows, movies, and video games. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. Yeah, so also I'm going to have to be holding the microphone at like a reasonable length because um, the the setup isn't as usual, obviously, as I said. So yeah, if it's a little bit weird, I apologize. Just for this once, we're going to be doing it. Oh, is there going to be something in there or not? <laughs> this winter's unannounced. Oh, damn well. <laughs> Before you threaten me, you should ask yourself who really sent the night wind? I have no alternative. As you said, I serve at your pleasure. But yeah, if it wasn't him, who could it have been? my god wait shit i know who this guy is i just can't remember his name uh -oh. oh shit oh yes go Boba. oh <laughs> what style oh my god <laughs> finishes and leaves Sick. Nice. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Oh, little shit. Some droids are such cowards and just so annoying. Oh god, it looks like a spider. Why? <laughs> oh, Burba. <laughs> I was gonna say, and I know there are guys and even women out there who sort of like are against Star Wars being political even though it's about war and all this stuff, but because I did see people talking about like colonization and stuff and I was like really excited then when I heard them talking about this, now I understand. And this is such a huge, I think, part of culture, colonization, especially, for example, even from Timora, Timora Morrison's um, point of view, um, like just colonization in general, just being able to say this as well, like the lines that he said, it's like, it's so powerful because colonization is such a, a t I mean, it still happens today and it still has lasting effects on the indigenous people of different lands, um, even here in Australia, in America, across the entire world, um, in the Polynesian islands, etc. And just, um, just to see that 
this is being said by I'm, I'm pretty sure he's po- obviously Polynesian. Um, forgive me if I'm doing that wrong. People can correct me on that. But that's such a powerful move from him. And even it's such a deep conversation that I think a lot of people don't really talk about. It. But even the fact that it's being touched on in Star Wars, this is such a big topic. And for it to be shown and even talked about. And even I was thinking about that. I was going to make that parallel. Like this is like, you know, a little bit like sort of like, colonization because of the train and obviously like them killing the people of the land um because they think that the people of the land is interfering with their sort of like stuff it's wrong and this is such a beautiful way of sort of representing the like colonization and racism and all that stuff it's great and it's beautiful and it's powerful especially in a world that's sci-fi and it's star wars like that's huge and i'm so happy that they actually conversed about this And this is such a huge topic as well, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But I think that's why a lot of people are touched by this episode. I I don't know what else is going to happen, so there must be other stuff. But to see that this topic is being touched upon, especially as someone whose family was from a country, Sri Lanka, which was colonised by the Dutch and then later the English, and there is still a heavy influence of the English there, even though they're, like, even though, like, colonised now, but even, like, I will say there's a lot of Chinese influence there now, so it's sort of like, it's still continuous there in Sri Lanka at the moment, but, like, to have that sort of represented in this is so powerful, and it's very meaningful, And but for the people who obviously understand colonization and just all this stuff, they will know, like, how important this is, and how important it is to us, so I'm just gonna say, like, this is such a huge, like, leap in terms of, like, thematics in this, in this sort of show, Amazing. (laughs) Oh? (laughs) Nope. Oh, it's one of those things. (laughs) We have seen a little bit of this in Clone Wars. Not in terms of this, but more mind control. So this is going to be interesting. Oh, Camino! Oh, the father's leaving. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so it doesn't even stay there for that long. Oh, wait. Are they going to make him a staff out of that piece of wood? Maybe that's what all Tuscans do. Sort of like a rite of passage sort of thing. That's kind of sick. But also... I wouldn't like a lizard going up my nose and into my brain. Ooh, I love this because, um, in a way this sort of parallels from Din's story in The Mandalorian. Um, oh, okay, he's not making it for him. Oh, he has to do it himself, okay. But, in a way, they're a little bit different now, but sort of parallels to what Din had to do. He had to go on all these different jobs, and then he had to, obviously, get this Beskar as payment. So he could upgrade his armor to sort of show, in a way, sort of what Boba did, show that that rite of passage, that he has the right to have Beskar as his armor. Um, It's obviously very different to the Tuscans, but at the same time, it's very interesting to see. Oh no, it's like a dance, sort of. Oh, that's so cool. This is also a little bit of part of Polynesian culture, which is pretty sick. They obviously do, like, those war dances, or even just dances in general. Nice! That was great! I love that! That was a great, honestly, a really good episode. I really thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, Because, again, I was really worried if this show was going to draw me in as much as Mandalorian did. Um, But it definitely did. I think it's a great show. I think, honestly, it's very different from Mandalorian. Mandalorian, obviously, you know, you have Din and you have the baby. But um, in a way, like, it's so good to see, like, uh, Boba's story sort of play out. Hold on. I think, obviously, again, it is very different from the Mandalorian, but... This is an established character, and but it is an established character that's been 
shrouded in a lot of mystery. And a lot of people were speaking about that. They were like, is it really necessary to talk about Boba's story? Isn't it best to sort of keep it in secret or sort of in mystery? But in all honesty, I'm open to sort of finding out more about Boba. Like, if it was some random character that just popped up for two seconds, I'd be like, there's no need for a, a show about that person because I don't care or it's just been so little of him that I just don't want to sort of know anything about them. Um, but with Boba, it's like, I've seen his story in little bits. And so now, in this sort of TV show, I'm so glad that we're getting sort of like a mixture of what he was like. So obviously we get him escaping, him wanting to escape the Tuscans, and yet showing them that he can be one of them. And he wants to help them. He wants to... Um, allow them to improve in their lives and stuff and help them grow as a group and a tribe especially so to see that happening right in front of our eyes is really great and to sort of see that also help him grow as a person because this is where he learned respect I think and now as a leader himself obviously in the present times he's trying to show that not everything can be just violence like not every answer is violence as Boba Fett. But also, in a way, I was also going to say, that tree thing with the two trees and Kamino on, well, it was sort of like Kamino plus the desert with the trees. One of them was smaller than the other, and I was like really confused. Would, was that supposed to like represent Omega from Bad Batch? Okay, this is major spoilers for people who haven't watched Bad Batch, but I'm about to spoil it for y'all. If you haven't watched it, I'm sorry. But it's confirmed that Omega is a direct descendant of, um, well, not direct descendant, is literally the daughter of Django Fett. Um, her gene is, like, completely clean of anything else and not a clone. It's, like, pure Django Fett. And so that's a big deal because now Boba has a sister and no one knows if she lives or dies. At the moment, I'm guessing we'll find out more in, in Season 2 of Bad Batch, but... That's another thing to be sort of not concerned about, but interested in. Because now we know that he has a sibling. Do they ever meet? And is she going to survive the next couple of years of the war? Because at this... No. Mm, it's not... I mean, I can't remember. Mm, I don't really know this. And I feel like it's because I haven't watched the movies in a while. So I might be wrong. But I can't remember when Boba Fett is hired by the Empire. So that's why. Because... During the early days of the Empire, that's when Omega and obviously the Bad Batch are together. So I'm trying to think where Boba is. Like, is he already with the Empire? Um, or is that later? So, like, that's going to be a little bit hard to sort of connect. So it'll be really cool to see if they got a live-action Omega to be in the show. That would be really, really cool. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if, like, she's alive. Like, no one knows if she's alive in this point in time. So, Yeah. I mean, that's sick, but yeah, I don't know how they would connect it, but that would be really cool. Anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on this episode of Boba Fett, The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 2, um, The Tribes of Tatooine. I thoroughly enjoyed this episode, guys, as you can obviously tell. I'm talking about a lot about it. Um, and the themes are beautiful. Um, talking about, like, obviously, like, coloni it, it is colonization, and in terms of, like, even racism to a certain extent. And so to see these themes still being spoken about in Star Wars is so beautiful. And even, I know a lot of people, especially men, <laughs> I'm just saying this because I've seen this on Twitter, I've seen this on my YouTube channel where people get fiery about it, which is totally okay. You can have your opinion, but at the same time, I'm sort of sitting there like, why? Um, <laughs> they talk about how there shouldn't be politics involved in Star Wars and stuff. And yet, in The Mandalorian, they talk about the war, they talk about criminals of war, they talk about even, uh, or prisoners of war, I should correct myself, or even just, like, how the Empire murdered their own soldiers. That's very, like, political. And even with this, like, it's so political, and it's showing a different side to it. Like, also, just quickly, because I know I'm talking a lot, but the pacing was amazing for this episode. Um, and it went so quick. Like, I didn't even realize it was, like, 50 minutes up. So, they're doing a really good job with the show so far in terms of the writing. I 
love it. I personally love the slow-paced burn of these shows. I know a lot of people are like, get to the action, get to this, get to that. And I'm like, nah, dude, just take your time. Like, I'm so chill with these Star Wars shows, especially because with Marvel, it's very different. Like, we don't know what's going to happen in each show, so it's going to be different. But with Star Wars, I sort of, I'm ready for what I'm going to get because I'm like, I'm ready for the slow burn for it to build up and then obviously have this climatic finish or something like that. So... I would like to be surprised, but at the same time, I'm already surprised by the themes and stuff that they're talking about. But anyway, I'm going to stop here because otherwise I'll talk forever. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fangirl out.